Hey there, Dr. Anna Maria Helt, herbalist and microbiologist with osada.com. And I'm back with part five of our Rocky Mountain medicinal plant and mushroom walk. So I'm now taking us back to the original trail we were on in the San Juan Mountains, uh, Elbert Creek Trail. And we're gonna look at the plants now in later in June. I was thinking it was in July from last summer, but it's later in June. And we'll see that the plants are better developed. You'll get to see what they look like at a later stage of development. And I'll get more into the medicine of the plants. So here we go with part five. And of course, uh, you can use the comment section to ask any questions you may have about the plants. Here we are back at the Elbert Creek Trail. It's been four or five weeks since our last trip here. I've since moved in town and it's been a bit of a shit show and hard to get back out here. This is the little elder that I showed you when I did the last video. It's growing, it's still not blooming, but a little later on down the trail, there should be some that are in the process of blooming. My cameraman is uh, out as of yesterday fighting wildfires in Arizona. So he was supposed to be here to shoot me, but instead I'm kind of soloing it and you'll just hear my disembodied voice here. There I am. Uh, but here we are, Albert Creek Trail, 9,000 feet elevation. It's now mid to getting a little bit later in June. And we're gonna compare some of the plants to how they looked in May before moving to our second location in La Plata Canyon. So here we have geranium this might be i don't know if this is maculatum or richard sony but we have a couple species of wild geranium here i'm just shading it so you can see the detail on the lovely little flower here five petaled flower uh, wild geranium is a very common plant in these parts and actually other parts of the west as well this is one of your standard diarrhea plants this is a the root is a great astringent for chronic loose stools uh, for diarrhea. Now keep in mind it's important to kind of get to the cause, the reason for that, and not just treat the symptoms, but this can be a really helpful plant for that, for bleeding as well, for oozy kind of rashes topically, and again it's the root that is used. So one of your, one of your sort of standard astringent plants, quite lovely. Something that I like to point out with this plant is that it will often grow in the same area as larkspur does, delphinium. Delphinium is a highly toxic plant and it's there is some risk at potentially confusing them when they're not blooming. This is very obviously not delphinium, but if you look at the leaves here, they can be quite similar. And I talked about this uh, the first time I was out, maybe a month ago on this trail. This time we're lucky because we're seeing the plant bloom. So the leaves can be quite similar. You need to make sure you know what you're harvesting when you're out in the woods so that you don't make a potentially fatal mistake or at least uh, a really bad, bad mistake that isn't fatal by harvesting the root of delphinium instead of the root of geranium. They can grow right next to each other. So learn this plant, look at the leaves in more detail, maybe bring a loop out um, so that you don't make a mistake. They're both really beautiful plants here in the mountains, but uh, <laughs> not related at all and not to be confused. So this is Potentia, otherwise known as Cinquefoil. Potentia is the botanical name, which means uh, five, well the Cinquefoil part means five fingers, although sometimes you'll see these with more than five fingers. This is another uh, kind of standard gentle astringent plant. I'm just swatting away mosquitoes. They seem to have discovered me. Um, it's strong, but at the same time not harsh, astringent, so this can be really useful for sore throat and ulcers, loose stools, diarrhea. Some people will even pick the leaves and stick them in their shoes to prevent blisters, or if you're already getting a blister on your heel. This is great topically as well as an astringent, as a soothing herb, it's antioxidant. We have... Um, at least a couple few different potentia species here um, and I don't know which one specifically this is off the top of my head. There's a smaller one that has a little bit of silver cast to the leaves and then there's a bigger one that's actually more like a shrub. But here we go, potentia, cinquefoil, another good astringent. 
So here's our Colorado state flower here, Columbine. Lovely, lovely beauty of the forest. Uh, and this is a plant that I actually, when I learned it in herb school, was taught that it is toxic, but I have since learned that uh, some of the locals here in the San Juans use the flower uh, as food, or maybe more as a garnish. You'd need an awful lot of flowers, so people will put this on salads and such. I've not ventured to do it yet, just because <laughs> that first impression of being taught that it was not edible has kind of stuck in my head. Uh, but here it is, Colorado State Flower. Uh, I should be clear that it is illegal to pick this flower in Colorado. So before you go out to get your salad garnish, you might want to keep that in mind. So here we go, Columbine. So on my first walk out here, I got here a bit too early to see Baneberry blooming. And now I got here a bit too late. I missed it. Um, I think I'm going to go up to higher elevation in the next couple of days where I took you before in La Plata Canyon to see if we can catch some here. So you, so you can see the very young fruits, my camera doesn't want to focus on it, the very young fruits are just starting to develop here post bloom. So Baneberry, if you're familiar with black cohosh of the east coast or just as a garden plant, they look a lot alike and that's because they're in the same genus, Actea. So this is Actea rubra, rubra for red, because when these berries are mature, it's going to be red. Now the berries are pretty darn toxic. You don't want to eat them, uh, but the root of this plant is used as medicine, very similar to black cohosh. Let me see if there are any others around here growing. This seems to be the main one. Um, so menopausal complaints, hot flashes, that sort of thing is very similar use. Uh, depressive symptoms, very similar use. In fact, at one point, I'm just going to stand up here and give you a backed up view. Uh, please have patience with my bad hip as I try to get up. <laughs> ah. So anyway, similar uses, musculoskeletal stuff, arthritis, low back pain, uh, climacteric complaints, like I said, depression. So years ago, I wanted to try this plant out for mood. Um, as somebody who has struggled much of my life with chronic depression, uh, I, you know, I wanted to use black cohosh for that, but when I would use it, it would mess up my cycle. Um, it's been useful for other clients of mine for mood and or cycles, but it's, it's just not my herb. It would throw me off, even at drop doses. So I thought, well, let me try its cousin Baneberry and see if I can get the mood benefits, you know, it's a little bit of support there without it throwing my cycle off. It did the same exact thing that Black Cohosh did to me. Uh, and I did play with this plant for about a year before I started using it in my clinic. Um, but I have started using it pretty much interchangeably with Black Cohosh. Um, if I can't get some good organically grown Black Cohosh. Uh, this is another common native plant in our area. Strikingly beautiful when these berries develop fully, you'll see that vibrant red in the shade of the woods here along the stream and it's magical fairy plant. When I first harvested the root and I made an extract of it and tasted it, I thought kind of like, is, did I black out somehow and grab a little bit of licorice root? What the hell? I'm not expecting this stuff to taste sweet. But lo and behold, um, I did a little searching and found Kiva's blog post on this where she talks about, you know, the sweetness as well as the acridity and the flavor. Uh, and it does have a sweet taste, much more so than I've noticed even for black cohosh. So Baneberry, one of our local medicinal plants that you know, in my experience, can be used pretty darn similarly to Actea racemosa. So this is Actea rubra. Now, despite the fact that this is Actea rubra, I have on this very trail seen some white berried versions of this. It is Actea rubra. It's not the East Coast version of Baneberry that has white berries, doll's eyes, that one's called. Uh, so it's kind of neat. We have both red berry and white berry variants of Baneberry along this trail here. So that wraps up part five. We have lots more plants to go, so stay tuned. And one final note on Baneberry, that beautiful plant I wrapped part five up with. The whole plant, other than the root, is toxic, so be aware of that. The berries are very toxic. 
Uh, the greenery is toxic. And while a number of herbalists have been using the root for quite a while as medicine, it is a low dose botanical. So uh, again, drop dosing to get the medicinal benefits of the root. Anyway, stay tuned. We'll be diving into the medicine of lots and lots of great plants here in the Southern Rockies. Thanks for watching.